have you noticed that recently your pain has just got worse for no apparent reason? You notice that your back pain's a bit worse, your neck pain's less, your neck is less comfortable than what it was, maybe a few more headaches. Have you noticed that everyone else is feeling the same way? There seems to be something in the water at the moment that uh, is causing a lot of people to uh, have their pain increased and uh, be a little bit more stressed out than normal. And today I'm here to, I guess, allay a few fears and explain what's going on because uh, it's not just here in the clinic that we're seeing it, but other clinics around Brisbane and around Australia and indeed around the world are seeing this as well. I'm Chris from the Headache and Pain Management Centre and today I'm explaining how what's going on out there in the whole wide world is actually impacting people's pain and what you can do about it to reduce the stress, reduce the anxiety, the fear, and actually get your pain back under control without actually coming into a physio clinic. I can't believe I'm saying that, but that's what we're going to do today. The research into pain is really unequivocal now, okay? It talks about the fact that pain itself is not just caused by tissue damage, okay? It's not just caused by injury, it's not just caused by damage to a disc or a nerve or compression, nothing like that. Pain on its own is a danger signal. It's a danger response to signals coming in from the environment and from your body, okay? So you can have all sorts of pain in your head, all sorts of pain in your neck and your back, but have absolutely nothing wrong on a scan whatsoever. And on the flip side, you can have all sorts of damage on a scan and nothing happening in terms of pain. So uh, this is what can happen. Pain and tissue damage are not always related. In fact, uh, I would say that a lot of the time it's not at all. So how does this kind of relate to what's going on right now uh, in the world and what's happening with your pain at the moment? Now, if you're like a lot of people, you'd have noticed that uh, there's a lot going on on the news right now, on social media right now, okay? There's wars going on overseas, there's interest rates going up, there's elections happening everywhere, um, interest rates are rising, uh, there's climate change, there's weather, there's floods, there's deserts, there's all sorts of things going on. And all of this coming into our system, absorbing it, watching the news, scrolling through social media all the time, actually amplifies our, I guess, fight or flight response within our body, okay? Our brains are not able to determine whether or not the danger is to us imminently or you know, out there in the wide world. Our brains are really bad at being able to sort of channel different types of danger, okay? It actually cranks us up and makes us more stressed. Now, what I said before about how pain operates, okay, that your brain is the final judge of whether you have pain or not, and it takes in all of the different signals from all over the place to determine if you're in a perceived danger state or if you're in a perceived safety state, okay? And part of that danger state can be pain. Uh, I suppose ways your brain can tell you it's pain, there's nausea, dizziness, fatigue, all of these sorts of things can tell you that something isn't quite right. And certainly pain is one of those mechanisms. Now, if you've had pain before and it started to turn chronic, you've had it for a very long time, it kind of waxes and wanes, um, and you've felt like over the last three or four months it's kind of cranked up to the max and nothing seems to help. I'd urge you to consider what you're consuming online and what you're consuming in terms of uh, news, in terms of media, TV shows you watch, and other things that might actually be causing that to crank up. Um, what we've noticed here at the clinic is that uh, as we've started asking people about what they've been watching and you know how worried they are about different things, we're finding a lot of people are very stressed and anxious about it. And once I start talking it out and realising that that's actually what's winding their system up, a lot of the time their pain actually decreases um, as a result of that, actually realising that that's the issue, uh, taking a few deep breaths, just chilling out and relaxing, doing some things actually um, I guess, wind the stress down so they're able to live their lives more comfortably and with less pain, okay? So um, the people that are looking to, I guess, solve pain only from a physical perspective, you know, the muscles, the joints, um, strengthening and things like that, um, we need to be cognizant to also look at the other things that can cause pain as well, those psychosocial factors, um, those things that may not be automatically, you know, intuitive, that caused the pain to happen. But I can tell you from many, many years looking through this that all of these different stressors out there on the telly, on your social media, family issues, even illness, you know, catching COVID, uh, the risks of COVID, these sorts of things coming into your mind can wind your stress levels up and actually make your pain worse. What's really important to know is two things. One, 
that your brain can actually do this to you um, even when you're not really wanting it to, okay, or even without realizing that it can. So first thing is realizing it, and second thing is actually doing some things to wind your system down, to relax, okay, to get better sleep, uh, to eat better food, to make sure those hormones and those chemicals in your body are doing those right things. Going out and getting some sunlight and going for a walk, maybe a gentle swim, um, spending some time with friends and having a laugh. Having a laugh is a really good thing to do. Actually smile and just look at what's good and what's going on because even though sometimes it's hard to see anything that's good happening, there are, we can see it. And the more that we actually put positive inputs into our body, the less chance that our pain will crank up. So I guess my lesson for today, even though the irony is that you're probably watching me on social media, um, is to reduce your social media intake and absorb things from your environment that are actually net positives for you, that don't stress you out, things that you can't control. Look at the things you can control, look at the positive things, and uh, do whatever you can to actually wind down that stress, wind down that anxiety, get some more sleep, and uh, add some more positive vibes into your body because I'm telling you, it will help with your pain if you are able to work that through. Um, if you're having issues with that, if you're having some struggles with being able to do that, there are resources, there are people that you can talk to, okay? So uh, your health professionals are your best people to touch base with, your trusted ones. Uh, obviously, there's psychologists, there's GPs, there's all sorts of people that you can talk to. And of course, those helplines as well if you really are struggling with what's going on in the world right now. But uh, part of my remit as a physio is not just looking at joints and muscles, but also taking care of people's general health overall as well, and uh, keeping an eye out for how mental health can, uh, can crank up or wind down pain, depending on how things are going. So for us, and the message today, have a look at what you're consuming, have a look at what uh, you're doing day to day. Are the things having a net positive impact or a net negative? Crank up the positive, wind out the negative, and you might just see some pretty decent results uh, with your pain just as a result of doing that. Hope that's been really helpful, and uh, I'll talk to you again soon. Cheers, and bye for now.